Good morning, KA. Happy Wacky Wednesday. We will get started on our phonics lesson today. So yesterday, we concluded the long A sound. And today, our focus is the long I sound. So I have a quick video. So I hope you enjoy it, which you normally do. And we'll use this video to review our long I sound. Long vowel I. enjoyed the video. I have some long I sound words for us to say together. I would like for you to say them with me and pay attention to the I sound. The first word is dime. Say it with me. Dime. I, I. You see how you hear how the I says its name? Dime. The second one is the word nine. N I I N. The third one is dice. The fourth one is maybe your favorite may, or my favorite pie. P I E pie. The third one starts with a long I. Ice. Ice. Iron, fire, and kite. These are words that are long I words. If you practiced with me, good job. If you didn't, you're going to have to practice with me tomorrow. 
So today I wanted to change it up a little bit and maybe put together this fun activity for you to do. So you're going to need to grab a piece of paper, something to write with, and if you want markers or something colorful, you can grab that as well. So if you need to pause the video to go do that, you can do so now. The activity, what you're going to do um, in this particular activity is you're going to say the word that is in the first box. And that is the word dime. You're going to say it. You're going to write it on your paper. I know you don't have this paper, but it's very easy. Just make nine or eight boxes and you can complete it that way, okay? So the first one is dime. So say the word. I included some illustrations to help you draw it. Draw the word. Oh, I'm sorry, write the word and draw the picture. The second one is nine. So say the word. Write the word and draw the picture. The third one is a dice. Say the word, write the word, and draw your illustration. The fourth one is pie. Say pie, write pie, and draw a pie. If it's going a little too fast for you, that's okay. Remember, you can pause there whenever you need to. The next one is ice. You can say the word ice. You could write the word ice and then draw ice. The following one is iron. You could say the word iron write the word iron and draw an iron. We're almost at the end. So the following one is fire. Say the word fire. Write the word fire and draw fire. The last one is the word kite. Write the word kite, say the word kite, and draw a kite. Again, you can pause as much as you need to. Once you complete this activity, we will continue on to our reading lesson. Welcome to our reading lesson. Our objective this week has been to focus on steps in sequence of events and using or finding the signal words like first, next, then, finally, or last. And we will continue that today. Okay, I have a fun video for you to watch. So what I want you to do is I want you, as you watch the video, I want you to pay attention to the signal words, if there are any. If not, you can think in to yourself or maybe if you have somebody at home helping you, you can talk about what do you think happens first? What do you think happens next? What do you think happens after that? What do you think happens at finally or at last? Okay, I hope you enjoy the video. A seed holds the beginning of a new plant. Roots grow from the seed, feeding on nutrients and water from the soil. As the roots dig down into the soil, the plant begins to emerge. Through photosynthesis, the plant uses sunlight to grow. As the plant grows, a flower begins to bloom. The flower's colorful petals and sweet smell attracts butterflies. Butterflies play a crucial role in the reproduction cycle of many flowers. Butterflies like to perch on flowers as they search for nectar to drink. 
pollen grains from the flower get all over its legs and body. When the butterfly flies away, it takes some pollen with it to a new flower. Some of the pollen falls off of the butterfly onto the new flower. Pollen grains that land on top of the flower stigma can begin to germinate. A tube grows from the pollen grain down toward the flower's ovary. Cells from the pollen travel down the tube to fertilize the ovules. Once fertilized, the ovules grow into new seeds. After the ovules are fertilized, the petals begin to wither and eventually fall off. Only the ovary remains healthy and attached to the stem. As the ovules grow into seeds, the ovary begins to expand and becomes the flower's fruit. The flower's fruit is a tough, dry capsule that eventually tears open to release the new seeds. Under the right conditions, these seeds will grow into new flowers. The life cycle starts over once again. All right, now that you have completed the video, you may want to pause it because you may you're going to need a piece of paper. You may need to go grab some. You may need to grab something to write with or anything that you want to use to make it colorful. So what you need to do is you will need to draw what happened in each step. Underneath the box of each step are our signal words. This time I used first, second, third, fourth because those are some signal words. They're different from the ones we used yesterday. To complete this, again, you don't have this paper, but all you have to do is do your boxes and write your signal words. So make a box and write first, another one and write second, another one and write third, and another one and write fourth, okay? You may need to listen to the video again, and that's okay. So I would recommend that you write down the signal words and the boxes, and then go back and listen to the video again, so that you can draw your illustrations of what happened in the correct order that it happened. Okay, once you are done with that, boys and girls, our reading lesson is over. and you can take a break if you want to relax and we'll start with our math lesson after this okay all right so yesterday we finished up circles identifying and sorting circles today we're going to start with triangles okay so you may want to grab your math book because you will need that. If you don't have your math book, you can definitely use whatever other paper you have. I'm going to review these lovely 2D shapes. The first one right here is a square followed by a triangle, rectangle, circle, diamond, hexagon, and trapezoid. Now, when we're learning about these vertices, vertices are just a fancy word for corners. You have two straight lines, and when they meet, they make a point. They come to a corner. This square has one, two, three, four vertices. Now, when we're looking at this triangle, look at those vertices. How many do you count? A triangle has three vertices. Let's keep going. Here's a rectangle. If you look at the vertices where two lines meet and come to a point, a rectangle has four vertices. A circle. Let's look at all the points on a circle where two straight lines meet. A circle has 
You guessed it, zero vertices, because there are no points on a circle. It's all round. Now, when we're talking about sides of a shape, those are the straight lines. So this is a side, this is a side, this is a side, and this is a side. So a square has four sides. It's those straight lines that are connecting the vertices. So let's go on to the next shape. Let's see here. We have a diamond. Now, how many sides does a diamond have? A diamond has four sides. This is a hexagon. Look at all those straight lines. How many are there on a hexagon? A hexagon has six sides. This is a trapezoid. Look at those straight lines, those sides. How many sides does a trapezoid have? It has four sides. So as a friendly review, vertices are the corners or points and sides are the straight lines that connect to vertices. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it helped. Okay, we are starting on our lesson on page 589. 589, identifying triangles. If you need a pause date to go get your stuff, you can. If not, we're gonna continue. As you notice here, we have a vertex which is the corner of our triangle. And we have our side, which is the line that joins the vertices. Okay. And I think the video talked about that. So what you need to do is first, I want you to grab your finger, your pointer finger. We talked about which one your pointer finger is in class and trace the triangle so you can feel what a triangle feels like when you trace it. When you're done with that, you can get your favorite color and outline the triangle with your favorite color. All right, so on page 590, number one reads, place a counter or anything that you have. It doesn't have to be a counter on each corner or vertex. Write how many corners or vertices. That's number one. Number two, trace around the sides. Write how many sides a triangle has. Again, if you need to rewind and pause it, just do that, okay? All right, page 591. Number three, this is all number three. So color the triangles in the picture. This is the fun part. Get your favorite colors. And some kids in our class like the color rainbow, even though it's not a color, but you know who you are. If you want to color them rainbow, go ahead. And this is the final page for the day, boys and girls. After this, you are done. Number four, sort the shapes. Color the shapes that are triangles. Mark an X on the shapes that are not triangles. Pause it if you need to. Number five, choose the correct answer which shape has three sides all right boys and girls well this was the second day of your asynchronous learning i'm sure you guys did great me and mr martinez miss you guys so much but guess what we will see you tomorrow all right we will see you for thumbs up thursday have a great day, okay? Bye.